Greetings everyone, I'm Adam Harrington. I'm spending all day in the woods today. And I thought I'd bring you along as I scout out some old areas and some new areas for morel mushrooms. Now you might be wondering to yourself, wait a minute, don't you live in Pennsylvania? Isn't it a bit early to find morel mushrooms? And you're absolutely correct. I do live in Western Pennsylvania and it is a bit early to find morel mushrooms. So I'm filming this early to mid-March and in Pennsylvania, I think the earliest sightings of morel mushrooms would be the last week of March, if not the first week of April. But a lot of people really look for morel mushrooms in Pennsylvania mid-April through about mid to late May. So it's definitely early. I do not expect to find morel mushrooms today. But I want to scout out some areas in advance to make sure I still have access to these areas and to make sure that the conditions are still optimal. And I want to show you some of the things that I'm looking for. And if I do show you footage of morel mushrooms, it's going to be footage from years past. So if you're somebody who's never found a morel mushroom before and you are looking for your first morel mushroom this year, or if you're looking for new spots, you have a couple spots but you're looking for more, and you want to see what I'm looking for, then you might find this video valuable. So without any further introduction on my part, let's go explore some potential morel mushroom hotspots. <music> Okay, when you're looking for morel mushrooms, you often hear that you gotta check when soil temperatures are between a certain window. And that window would be between 45 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit. And that seems to be pretty accurate. Right now, the soil temperatures here in this particular spot in Western Pennsylvania are about 38 degrees Fahrenheit. So again, it's a little cold, a little early, and that is to be expected. I should wait a couple of weeks before I expect to find morel mushrooms. But over the 10 year average in this particular area on this day, the 10 year average is 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're above average, meaning we might see morel mushrooms a little earlier than normal. Now I really like this spot because this one consistently produces morel mushrooms almost every year and I found this spot not by doing any research or knowing what trees were in this area. I literally just came here got out of my vehicle, started walking around, and within 10 to 15 minutes, started finding morel mushrooms. And sometimes that's just the way it is. Sometimes you just have beginner's luck, because this is one of the first spots that I ever did find. And I just made note of it, and almost every year that I have come back, I found morel mushrooms. I also like this area because I find three different morel mushrooms in this area. Sometimes I go to a spot, I only find one morel mushroom, meaning one species. Or sometimes I'll get lucky, find two different species. But depending on the time of the year, I'll find three different ones. And I say time of the year because I think the first one that appears in this area, I haven't seen any other ones appear first, but the black morel, Morcella angusticep, seems to appear first. I haven't seen any others appear before that one, so I'll say Morcella angusticeps, the black morel, appears around here in western Pennsylvania the second week of April in this spot. But I've heard reports that the last weekend of March, if not the first week of April, people are finding black morel. So that one typically appears first. Then I'll find another mushroom in that black morel clade, which is Morcella punctipes, the half free morel. Some people don't think that's a true morel mushroom. It is a true morel mushroom, Morcella punctipes. That one appears maybe a week after the black morel, but there is overlap between the two. And then we'll start to see, once the soil temperatures warm up a little more, the yellow morel, Morcella americana. Some people call that the blonde morel. So we start to see morel mushrooms here mid to late April, all the way through the first or second week of May. And depending on the environmental conditions, if it's rainy, if it's mild, we'll see a lot of fruitings. And I also like this spot because there's a lot of cool wildflowers and a lot of cool plants that appear on this hillside. Now, why would those three morels appear here and you don't find three different species in other areas or you only find one species or no species? I don't really know. Maybe it has something to do with the trees. And I'm seeing four main trees on this particular slope. So I'm seeing black cherry trees, a lot of black cherry trees, a lot of mature black cherry trees, living and dead. That could have something to do with the morel mushrooms here. I'm seeing some dead ash trees, some big dead ash trees. We don't really have big living ash trees here in Pennsylvania because of the emerald ash borer. So the ash trees could have something to do with morels. There seems to be an association. 
I'm seeing some red maple trees. I don't think there's any association between those red maple trees and the morel mushrooms. But another tree that I think has an association with these morels would be the hickory trees. I'm seeing some hickory trees, not a lot of mature ones, some young ones and some medium aged hickory trees. I'm seeing the bitter nut or the yellow bud hickories. These are very easy to identify in the winter because they have buds that are yellow and very fragrant. Hence why some people call them yellow buds, but they're also called bitter nut because the nuts tend to be bitter, but the oil is absolutely delicious if you can make oil from the bitter nut hickory trees. So those three trees, I'm also seeing the red maple. Those three trees might have something to do with all these morel mushrooms that I'm finding in this area. I'm also seeing a lot of spice bush but the spice bush probably doesn't have anything to do with the morel mushroom. So if you have an area that has the cherry trees, the ash trees, maybe you're seeing some hickory trees as well, then you might have the good fortune of finding a lot of morel mushrooms in that particular spot when the soil temperatures warm up to between 45 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's keep looking around, see if we can find some other potential hot spots for morel mushrooms. Okay, so right here might not seem like the most ideal habitat for morel mushrooms because it's kind of like a meadow with a lot of grass. And right over there is an edge habitat with a lot of spent stalks from last summer and last autumn. A lot of goldenrod, a lot of asters, a lot of brambles as well. So very difficult to maneuver through. But I'm wondering if perhaps back in there, you see those tall straight trees? They're all relatively of the same species. I'm wondering if in a couple of weeks there might be morel mushrooms back in there based on that tree species. I think I know what it is. So let's go take a walk back into there and see why there might be morel mushrooms in there in a couple of weeks compared to this area right here. Okay, so I pushed through the brush and I'm really glad that I did because I'm now in an area that I did explore about two years ago and I did not find morel mushrooms here, but I'm scouting it out again because I think I should be finding morel mushrooms here as long as I time it perfectly. So these super tall straight trees that you see all around me, and there are dozens of them on this hillside leading down into a wetland area. These are tulip trees or tulip poplar or yellow poplar, Liriodendron tulipifera. And I think what was going on two years ago is that, you know, I found black morels in that first spot that I showed you, which was about a mile away. That was the second to third week of April. But it's been my experiences over the years that tulip trees seem to produce morels later in the season, at least here in Western Pennsylvania. So late April through early May to mid May. So some of the last morels to appear seem to be associated with these tulip trees. So this year, I'm going to try to push it back a little bit and explore this area later in the season, hoping to find morel mushrooms. But I just wanted to make sure that these trees were still here, wasn't logged out or anything, that I could still access this area. You know, there's a lot of stilt grass in this area. It's an invasive grass that just completely takes over. But during morel season, you don't see a lot of it. You just see the dried stalks from last year. But by summer, by fall, I really wouldn't be able to get into here without worrying about you know, too much brush or a lot of ticks in this area. So these trees, tulip poplar trees or yellow poplar, these are very easy to identify because they're very tall, they're very straight. They're some of the tallest, straightest deciduous trees in Eastern North America. They grow all over Eastern North America from New England all the way down to Florida. They've got ridged bark, they've got beautiful flowers. You can see signs of them down below without even looking around because sometimes you'll see these seed remnants or these remnants from these fruit capsules. They're very long, and they're very straight. And if you see a bunch of these, that means there are tulip trees in the area. Now the morel mushrooms that I find associated with the tulip trees aren't the black morels, but there are two in particular. I typically find Morchella americana, the yellow morel or the blonde morel associated with these trees, but I also find another one that I didn't mention yet, which is Morchella diminutiva. And I find Morchella diminutiva to be associated with tulip trees more so than any other morel species that I've found, but that's just been my experience. And they're called Morchella diminutiva because of the smaller size. This is typically what I'm looking for, stands of tulip trees. Not just one, not just two, but stands of them. If you would see a 360 view of this entire area, you would count 50, maybe 60 tulip trees, all of decent size as well. So you could see the size of this one. It's a medium sized tree. You know, these will grow to be 50 to 100 feet tall here in Pennsylvania. That's the average size. I think the tallest in Pennsylvania is 158 feet. And if you get down into the Southern United States, Southeast United States, specifically in the Great Smokies, you'll see tulip trees up to 170 feet tall, even greater because they can grow up to 200 feet tall. They can live to be between 250 to 300 years old. You don't really see a lot of saplings of tulip trees here in Western PA just because of the heavy deer browse and there's a lot of deer sign in this area. 
as I walk around, I can see a lot of deer sign. And so it doesn't surprise me that I don't see a lot of the saplings around here. And tulip trees are considered to be facultative upland species, meaning they usually occur in non-wetland areas, but occasionally you'll find them in wetland areas, at least here in the Northeast. And there's a wetland all the way down there, but this is a slope leading down to that wetland area. So it's no surprise that I'm seeing a lot of these tulip trees. So again, I'm going to check this spot later in the season, hoping to find some morel mushrooms so long as the rains are very generous to us. And maybe I'll see some Morchella diminutiva along with Morchella americana. Maybe I'll see another morel species, not quite sure, but it's good to be back in this area because I haven't been here in two years. I'm glad I could still make it in. The brush hasn't completely taken over and we'll see what happens in a couple of weeks. But if you have an area where you see a lot of tulip trees, check those spots, especially mid to late morel season for you and you may have the good fortune of finding a bunch of morel mushrooms. Let's go see if we can find another spot. Okay, so now I'm in a completely different area. I drove about 15 miles, finally arrived here. This is a spot that I've been coming to for a couple of years, though only last year did I really hunt it for morel mushrooms, and I did have luck. Now there are a couple different micro habitats within this general area. There's one down there, it's a floodplain area, which I'm going to explore in a couple of minutes. But before we go down there, right behind the camera is an old homestead-like area. You can tell because there are some trees that do signify that perhaps there was a homestead there not too long ago, within the past century. And in those particular areas, we can probably find some morel mushrooms, and I'll tell you why in just a couple of seconds. So let's start with that place over there, then we'll work our way back to the floodplain area and talk about how to find morel mushrooms in these particular habitats. Okay, so this is a spot that I just stumbled upon last year. I was walking up and down this creek, and I decided to go off trail a little bit found some open areas, worked my way through some of the brush, and I encountered an old apple orchard. So this is an old apple tree. This is a pretty old tree right here. You can see how gnarly it is. And perhaps you've heard that morels are associated with apple trees, and that's true. I tend to find many morels in association with apple trees. I tend to find the yellow morels and the half-free morels in association with apple trees. I don't find too many black morels in association with these trees, but maybe your experiences differ. So I mentioned that this was an old homestead area, and there are signs that this area was developed more recently compared to the floodplain area. You could just tell there are a bunch of pioneer species around here. These are the species that tend to come up after an area has been cleared, and they take advantage of scarce resources, and they grow quite rapidly. So I'm seeing some black walnut trees, I'm seeing some black birch trees, I'm seeing some black locust trees, and of course I'm seeing these apple trees, which were probably planted here within the past century. Now personally, I'm not one to make apple orchards my go-to place, my go-to hotspot for morel mushroom harvesting. If I stumble across an apple orchard, I'll look briefly for morel mushrooms, but I don't go out of my way for the apple orchards. And perhaps you've heard that there are some safety concerns regarding the foraging of morel mushrooms in areas where there are apple trees, old apple orchards. And that's because throughout the early 1900s, it was a recommended practice by the USDA to apply pesticides, lead arsenate pesticides, to combat something called the coddling moth, which was destroying apple orchards. And because lead and arsenic do not break down too easily in the soil, those contaminants still persist in the soil today and they'll probably persist for a very long time. And there was a preliminary study conducted about a decade ago showing that there are statistically significant positive correlations between the lead in the soil and lead in morel mushrooms in apple orchards and arsenic in the soil and arsenic in the morel mushrooms in apple orchards. And so it might not be that wise to just forage for morels in old apple orchards and eat a lot of those year after year after year after year after year because those contaminants can build up in your system. And so that's why I don't make this my go-to spot. However, if I do find some morels in association with apple trees, I'll probably forage some of them. And so if you find old apple orchards, go look for morel mushrooms, see if they're growing underneath there. But just keep in mind that they could be contaminated with higher than normal levels of lead and arsenate. It's not to say you can't have a couple of them every single year, but if you pound them year after year after year after year after year, 
who knows what that could do to your system. So I tend to not harvest too many or even look under apple orchards because I don't want to get too tempted. I'll see what's coming up here in a couple of weeks and if I find some royal mushrooms, maybe I'll harvest a couple. So let's go look at the other place that I was alluding to a little earlier. Okay, so the last habitat that I'll show you is about 100 yards away from the apple orchard. This is the floodplain area that I referred to a little earlier. So you can see it's the plain that's a little above this fast flowing stream right here. This is a good area to find morels in because of a tree species that typically grows in these wetland type habitats. And that tree would be the American elm tree, Ulmus americana. This is an elm tree right here. It's actually kind of fused to this tree right here. This is not an American elm. I'll tell you about this species in a second. This is not an American elm, but this is an American elm right here. So there are two straddling that other species. And morels seem to grow in association with American elm trees. Many people have a lot of luck finding morels in association with elm trees. And Almus americana is considered to be a facultative wetland species, meaning it typically grows in association with wetland type habitats. Sometimes you'll find it in non-wetland areas, maybe the slopes leading down to the wetlands. Remember, there was another tree we talked about earlier, which was almost the opposite. It was the facultative upland species, which was Liriodendron tulipifera, the tula poplar, that one typically grows in upland habitats, but occasionally it'll grow in wetland habitats. So Almus Americana, I talk about this in many, many videos. You're probably sick of me talking about Almus Americana, but we don't see a lot of larger trees these days because Dutch elm disease takes them away from us. So we see the smaller ones, we see the medium-sized trees. A good tip with American elm trees is you wanna look for the dead or dying elm trees, look around, and you may have the good fortune of finding morel mushrooms. Now the other species that's right next to it is this one right here and right here, you can see the bark just sloughing off. So what tree is that? Well, that's the American sycamore, Platanus occidentalis. Now to me, this is an indicator species because this one typically grows in floodplain areas. It grows all up and down Eastern North America, it tends to form more pure stands in the Southern part of its range. And up North, it tends to be replaced by silver maples in the floodplain areas. But I see a lot of this here in Pennsylvania. Now, some people, claim that they find morels growing underneath the sycamores where there are no elm trees nearby. If you have an area where there are pure sycamore stands, maybe look underneath them during the height of morel mushroom season and you may have the good fortune of finding morels in association with them. But personally here in Western PA, I tend to think of them more as indicator species for the Ulmus americana, the elm trees, which have morel mushrooms typically growing underneath them as long as they're the dying and the dead elm trees. These ones are a little young right here. I wouldn't expect to find too many morels here, but I'll walk up and down here the third week of April, the fourth week, and then probably the first two weeks of May, probably every other day or at least a couple times a week because you never know when they are going to pop up. And I actually haven't really explored this area, so this is a pretty new area for me, but I'm excited to get in here in a couple of weeks and see what kind of mushrooms I'll find growing in association with these trees. Okay, so I think that's all the areas that I'll show you today. It's been a full day for me. I started very early this morning. It's late afternoon right now. The sun is definitely beating down on me. It's getting warmer, which means these soils are getting warmer as well. But it is still a little too cold. I did not expect to find a single morel mushroom today. And we did not find any morel mushrooms today. But I hope you still learned a lot. And I hope you could use a lot of this information to your advantage whenever you go out and look for morel mushrooms, whenever the soil temperatures warm up. But don't be afraid to go out right now and just get familiar with some of these spots. You know, we talked about the cherry trees, the ash trees, the hickory trees. We talked about the tulip trees. We talked about some of the apple orchards. And then we finished off in this floodplain area with sycamore trees and American elm trees. These are by no means the only habitats where morel mushrooms grow. Just some of the spots that I like to get into, this is what they look like. And hopefully you have a lot of luck this year. And hopefully I have a lot of luck this year as well. We'll see in a couple of weeks. Thanks so much for watching this video. As always, I truly appreciate it if you've been watching my videos for some time. And I encourage you to subscribe to the Learn Your Land YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. We can also stay in touch via the email newsletter. You can sign up at learnyourland.com. And if you're on social media, on Facebook and Instagram, you can give me a follow. I'm at Learn Your Land on Facebook and on Instagram. Thanks again for watching this video and I'll see you on the next one.